Howdy folks, welcome to part five. We're going to continue on and I just wanted to show you that um, I think it was down here. We had a, if I just had all of this code was missing here, I believe. And so that was part of why we were, it was either that or, yeah, I think it was just that little bit. But yeah, we had stuff that was getting trapped when it, there was a block above and below it. It just, it would just sit there and that was, that was why. So yeah, um, that's what was happening with that. And so today what we're going to do is we're actually going to, let's see, let's take out these and let's go like this. We are going to, just for debugging purposes, uh, we're going to comment out that little chunk here. Now, can we collapse this? Can we collapse that? Yeah. Well, we can. No, we can't collapse. Okay. Because I wanted to collapse this. <laughs> but um, yeah. Okay. That's not a problem. All right. So no valid move. What was our what was our thing? Okay. Enemy trapped. So we want to increase our enemy trapped thing. So we're going to go whoops we're gonna go like that whoops that and no mal no valid move okay and so that is going to be oops that is gonna be our our code for this thing and I'll show you that it does work eventually there we go and so now it should it should be able to do a fairly rudimentary thing. Is it going to come after me? Yeah, see, it's going to come after me. The red's going to come after me. The orange is going to come after me. See? Nice. Nice. And so one of the things we need to do is this problem right here is, is one thing that we need to deal with. I want to see what the blue is going to do. Is, gonna blue the, is the blue going to be able to catch me? And that's kind of weird. The orange doesn't know what to do either, does it? Okay, I'm not sure why the orange. Why don't we check out what's going on with the orange here? The orange is number. Let's go pause here and the orange is number. Let's find out which one the orange is. I think it's two. Yeah, it's enemy number two. So we're going to come back up to here and we're going to look at why the orange is having a problem. And so we're going to go like this. And we're going to skip through until it's two. No. Oh, I guess I need to. I need to come down. Whoops. To this. There we go. Okay. So we're going to go like that. That's zero. That's one. Okay. So I is two now, right? Okay. So let's see what is happening with our orange that does not want to that does not want to. Okay, so these are our values. I think what's going to happen is we've got stuff that's even, maybe. Um, let's see. So now we still have these. That's fine. None of those were, none of those ended up because the orange, let me see. Let's go look again at this. Let's go like this and see where our orange, yeah, see our orange has four valid moves here. Okay, so that's not a problem. All right, and so if distance up and if distance down is less than, okay, what is our best? Our best is distance down is less than, okay, it is less than up. Oh, I see what's going on. We do have a logic error here because this is not less than all of these and the left one is also not less than all of them. So what we need to do is we need to add an equals in here, I think. So we're gonna go like that and we're gonna put in equals on all these. There we go. And so some of these are gonna have, so up is gonna have priority over down, etc., etc. So up is gonna be the first priority, down is gonna be the second priority, left is gonna be, because it's basically once it does that, it's not gonna do this elf, elf, it's not, it's not going to do the elf, right? The else statement, the else if. Okay, so yeah, so once we've gotten that, let's try this again. 
and here come on you can do it you can why won't it let me wow okay there we go all right let's let go of this too and let's see if it yeah see now it's able to do it cool okay so one of the other things we want to do is we have this problem here and so it just goes back and forth between two things um unlike pac-man mazes we have dead ends here and so we'll probably have to make some measures that that help it deal with dead ends and that kind of thing so let me see huh that's kind of weird too yeah see it's doing up as a priority over right and so we can later on we can add in um, some kind of random thing like if two things are equal you know we can add in more complicated stuff but for right now that's fine it doesn't need to be super uh, perfect and all that at the moment and so we're gonna do because we, we want them to be kind of kind of dumb you know, we don't, we don't want them to be all like just, you know, completely converge on the player. Um, we want them to be kind of challenging, but not super ridiculous. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to add in, we're going to add in a variable. We're going to make them travel in a straight line and enemy line. Um, and so we're going to go down here. And we're going to go enemy line equals new int max enemies. And so what this line is, this is just going to be a counter. And so when we, we do have a random on here, right? Yeah, R. Okay, good. And so what we're going to do is instead of doing all this stuff, we're first going to check if... Uh, enemy line is greater than zero uh, is less than or equal to zero and we're also going to do that so we're going to count down and I need to do this too there we go and so each enemy is only going to um, change its direction it's only going to change its direction when this thing hits zero. And so we're going to go like this, and we're going to put all of this code inside here. There we go. So, yep, we're going to put that code inside right there. So it just, it just bumped all that stuff up. So, yeah, we're going to put all that code in here. And now, did it? No, it didn't. Okay, that's kind of weird. We're gonna we're gonna get rid of this too. I'm gonna put this in a text file off to the side for right now, just because it's too bulky. And let's go like you know what we can go. Yeah, we're gonna. I'm just gonna make a new text file over here. And paste it in here so that we can do that later <laughs> so that we can paste it back in okay so what I want to do is why isn't this there we go okay now it's auto indented everything okay so only when our enemy has actually um, hit the end of its line it wants to do a new move thing and the other thing we need to do is go um, let's see we're gonna do move X we need to move these back out of here there we go and you know what we are gonna have to store this outside of the scope of this because can you see why I think you can see why uh, because this is going to be we're gonna need that to be persistent across ticks so we're gonna take get rid of those we're gonna get rid of these and we're gonna have to 
put them up here. And we're gonna go, whoops, like this, X and move Y, like that. And the other thing, we need to declare those in here. Why is target Y suddenly, oh, because I erased that there. Okay, so we're gonna go move X, and move Y, you know, move X and move Y, and then we're gonna have to come down here and we're gonna have to find every instance of these. And let's see where we are here. We're gonna go like this, and we're gonna go find and replace, and we're gonna find move X, and we're gonna change that to X, I, there we go. And we're gonna go replace all. Is that really, was it just three of them? Oh, I thought it was gonna be more than that. Okay. All right, and you know what? When we bring our other code, if we bring our other code back, we're gonna have to change that too. We'll have to do a find and replace on that, but that's fine. Okay, so we've got all of those. We can close this out and so now what we need to do is we need to make sure that if it's going to hit a wall because this is only this is only happening when the timer runs out we also want to make sure that it changes direction let me see here um, if we move it to a better position and it hits a wall because yeah, it's not gonna check this here. That's why, okay. Let's get rid of these spaces too. Whoops, just cleaning up. There we go. So we're gonna go if uh, block enemy x i comma enemy y whoops, enemy Y, I. So if it hit a wall, then we need to, we need to go uh, enemy line I equals zero. So we need to set that so that the next time it comes around, it's gonna do this. And then we're also going to go, um, we're going to go I know there was something else we needed. Oh, we need to move it back here. So we're gonna have to go like this. We're gonna have to unmove it. So we're just gonna minus equals with each of these. And I think we can even do this before we move so that next time, yeah, I think we could do that so that um, if it does bounce into a wall, it can recheck and immediately move. No, cause it's still not gonna move at the end of that, okay. No, that's fine. And that should allow it to do all that stuff. And then, so if this is less than zero, we wanna reset this to a bigger number, right? And so we're gonna go enemy line i equals r dot new next, that is. And we're gonna go maybe 10. So it's gonna to try to go up to 10 blocks in a row before it uh, before it does its next thing. So let's see if that's gonna work at all. They should kind of like, they should start moving and let's see. Interesting, are they moving? They're moving diagonally now. Well, that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure why they're moving diagonally. Huh. They're moving both. And you know why? Because I'm not resetting this move Y to zero. So we're going to go like this and we're going to go move X I equals zero and move Y I equals zero. That's probably why. Okay, so let's try this again. 
and we'll see what it's going to do. Oh, they can't reach me this time. <laughs> and so when they hit this, they should try a new thing. So that's what I'm wondering is like this one is just doing nothing. Okay. And then he's stopping and he's not, it, I don't think it's resetting because see, he's waiting. He's waiting a long time. So I'm going to have to see what is happening with that. Come on, you can stop sometime. Okay. So let's take a look here. If it's this, you know what? Is it resetting the move to zero each time? I put that in the wrong place, didn't I? I need to do that. That's what I needed to do. Duh. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> there we go. So he should just move in a straight line for a while and then recalculate what he's going to do. So yeah, when they hit a wall, it takes them one tick to make a new decision. There we go. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, and we've got this orange. So they should start making their way around I think they should start making their way around these obstacles a little bit more. Yeah. So he stopped and he went past. He overshot. So does he get stuck in a dead end here? That's the question. I think he I think he does. Okay. They're still going to get caught in dead ends, which I suppose is fine. We can just add more enemies. <laughs> We can keep them stupid, but have them get stuck. So let's see what this guy does. Because I mean, I want the player should be able to kind of strategize what they're going to do and and mislead them also, maybe. And so is he going to? Yeah, see, he's working his way over. Cool. So let's see what happens here. See, I don't think he's going to be able to work his way through that, and that's what we need to work on. That's what we need to be able to get them to do, is they need to be able to find a better path that's not going to dead end them. Hmm. Okay. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Um, we could do something like check and see if their position is, is going to the same thing over and over again. We can tell them to, uh, you know... If their if their position is going the same way over and over again to the same couple spots, we can tell them to try something different too. But I think what I want to also add in is I want to add in some um, different some different uh, strategies. And so I think we're going to try that too. Is so we're going to go int enemy strategy there we go and we're gonna go like this there's the trapped thing I think that's what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to use that probably for for that sort of thing enemy strategy it was new int okay so now each enemy is gonna have its own strategy when we init enemies, we want to go, um, let's see, four int i equals zero. And where's our num enemies thing? There we go. Where'd it go? There we go. We can be lazy. I could have typed it by now, right? <laughs> and we're going to go um, enemy strategy equals r dot next and we're gonna go zero one two three so I got I've got three generic generic things here really is that huh 
Okay. So, oh, enemy strategy I, duh. All right, so we're gonna go, type zero is direct, where the, it's just gonna go right at the target. Type one is head off, where they try to go ahead of you. And type two is uh, behind. And type three is wander, okay? And so this one is gonna try to come up behind you and basically go at where you were a few moves ago. And this one is just gonna pick kind of a random spot somewhere on the screen and just start moving toward that. And then each time it's going to re-figure out its target. So we're gonna go if enemy strategy i equals zero and so that's going to be our direct type and so we're going to need to know which direction the player is moving right we are going to need to know which direction the player has moved in the last turn um, and we're also going to need for this behind thing we're also going to need to know let's say the last 10 moves last 10 positions of the player and so we're gonna go um, let's see here let's go int last X and we're gonna go last Y and then we're gonna go int last pointer equals zero. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a, here we go. We're gonna go last x equals new int 10. And we're gonna do the same thing with y. Whoops. So we're gonna have an array of in integers to store our x and y positions. And then this is actually gonna be it's going to sit there and it's going to point to whichever one we're going to store our current thing into and then we can go we can use that and count our way backwards to however far we need to go so that way we can we can i mean there's two ways you can do this basically you can either do that or you can basically um push a you can basically uh push a value into this buffer and keep sorting it each time or you know moving it across each time and so it's it's just a it's just a preference uh, as far as how you like to program the stuff to do that so I'm not sure if everybody's following me on that but basically you have your one two three four five six seven eight nine right this is your these are your positions in your array and then your pointer is going to be like here okay and then the next time it's going to be here, the next time it's going to be here, the next time it's going to be here. So when you save your last x and x, y on this tick, you're going to save it into this position. And then if you need to um, access something that was, you know, five moves ago, you're going to subtract one five times. So you're going to one, two, three, four, five, or you're just going to subtract five. And then if it's less than zero, you're going to add 10, right? So one, two, three, four, five, and that's gonna be negative two, right? So that's that would be negative one and negative two, and then you add 10 is eight. So there you go. So that's how you can do that. That's how you can handle your little pointer thing. The other way to do it is basically you store it here. Like say you start out and you store your, um, your last position here and then the next tick, you have to go move, you have to copy all of these. You have to copy nine from eight, eight from seven. So you're copying all 10 of these each time and then coming through and adding in your new one into your blank spot. So like I said, it's not, one way is not necessarily better than the other. Um, it's, it's more of a preference thing. So what we're gonna do is each time let me see, each time the player moves, so where is the player 
moving code, right? Let's see, where is the player moving code? It is over here. And so we're gonna do void um, player moved, and we're gonna do old X. Are we gonna do old X and old Y, or are we gonna do new X and new Y? Or we don't even need that because we already have the, the position. Okay, so when the player moves, we're gonna go last pointer, and we're gonna do that at the end. And then we're gonna go last X, last pointer, equals player X. Okay, and last Y, last pointer, equals player Y. And then we're gonna move our last pointer and then if last pointer is greater than um, last x dot length, then we're gonna go last pointer minus equals last x dot length. And I think that is greater than or equal to because if the length is gonna be 10, the highest number is gonna be nine. Yeah. So if that equals 10, we want it to go back to zero. Yeah, so that's correct. That's the way we wanna do that. So, um, yeah, that's right. I mean, we can, all, we can also just tell it to equal zero. Um, a little bit easier. <laughs> it doesn't have to calculate what zero is. So we can just have it go back to zero. And yeah, so each time the player moves, it's gonna do that. And we're gonna store our information in there. And so then what we're gonna do is go back up to here. And then we're gonna do our if, if enemy strategy I equals one and we're gonna go like this and I think let me see what we need to do is we need to find the player X minus yeah so let's go uh, int player direction X equals why don't we just call it PDX equals um, let's see player X minus last X and that's gonna be last pointer right is our pointer let me check that again when we change that when we change that no see we're gonna have to go we're gonna to have to change that before we do that. So that way our last pointer is where we want it to be. So let's swap this around there. So that way, yeah, that way it's all in the right spot. Okay, so our pointer is the one that's currently in, uh, in use, the one that was just set instead of having to subtract every time. So yeah, player X minus last pointer right and so target x is going to be is going to be um, player x minus uh, plus bdx right so if we were at 10 if we went from 9 to 10 so 10 minus 9 is 1 we went from nine to 10, so that's a one, it's a positive one. Yeah, so that's where the player is heading. Okay, so now what we can do is since we have this PDX here, we just make this a little bit simpler and replace all that with this. So we don't even need that variable there. And then we can do the same thing for target. 
Y. There we go. Right? And we also need to replace all of these. <laughs> Don't forget that part. <laughs> and yeah, because you know what happens. Last Y. Okay. So that is the players going, or the enemy is going to try to go after uh, in front of the player. And then what we're also going to do is the zero is the following. So this is um, and so this is going to be and assume the player is going to move in that direction. And then we can even do this like let's say times Four. Let's say we're going to try to get four blocks ahead of them. Okay, times four, like that. Okay. And so they're even going to try to cut them off through. Um, so the interesting thing is if you're trying to, like, if you're basically going up against a wall, they're going to try to probably get, get around the other side of the wall even, which is fine. I they Like I said, I don't want them to just, you know, massively crunch on you and everything. <laughs> I do want it to be um, fairly dumb. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go um, int um, new pointer or something like that. We're, so we're gonna find a, our temporary pointer equals last pointer minus, let's go four. Again, we're going to go four moves. Okay. And then if T pointer is less than zero, then T pointer plus equals last X dot length. Okay. So it's going to basically pick this position. And then we're going to do the same thing here. And no, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to do target x equals, because we don't need to do all this vectoring. We just need to go um, last x and then t pointer. There we go. So that's where the player was four moves ago. And then we can go target y equals last y. There we go. And then we can do a wander else. Let's see, uh, else. Um, toward a, or uh, toward a random target. Okay, so we're going to say target x equals r dot next. And then we're going to say block max size. Yeah, we're going to go max size, size minus 2 plus 1. So, because we want a number between 1 and then one to the, yeah, between one and max size minus one, I believe. Okay, that should give us y i equals r dot, yeah, we're going to do the same thing. And we need to put a dot in there. There we go. Okay, so something else we want to do to help with debugging is we want to be able to visualize where these targets are. And so I think what we're going to do, because this should, this should now cover all of our cases. And did we just randomly, yeah, we did a, a next. Why don't we do this so that we ensure we get one of each for right now, is we're going to go equals I. So that way, whoops, that way we know. 
that we've got one of each type that we're trying out. We're going to go over to the repaint and we're going to copy these and I guess we're going to have to show we're going to do debug some some debug values here so let's go up to here and we're going to go int uh, debug dtx and dty so our debug target display positions okay and so that's going to let us visualize where the debug things are and so we're going to go like this whoops like that and dtx and debug target y so we're just going to have that go like this equals target x and dty equals target y there we go okay so now those are going to be stored and you know what we need to do this and target x that would have really thrown me off because it would have copied the whole array over i think <laughs> no it would have just made a pointer i don't know no it would have I'm not sure if it would have made a pointer to the array anyway that would have been problematic okay so we have all of that set up so we're going to go here and we're going to go dt x copy that over to these and dt y and we're going to copy that over to all of these and then we're going to go light yellow is there light yellow light is there a light yeah there's light golden rod yellow sure why not dot light blue is there a light blue oh okay it I, I don't know why it doesn't overwrite the rest of this. I'm not sure why. Okay, and then we could go light orange. Is there a light orange? I mean, I suppose I could draw a rectangle too. Dot light uh, pink. I mean, you know, we could do a, because there's fill ellipse. Let's see if there's something else. Fill, closed curve, fill path, polygon what is that does that just does that uh, yeah I'm not sure what that is let's see what the polygon does Oops. let's see what that gives us for options here divine by point structures no that's no that's too much we don't need to we don't need to do all that so we're just gonna go back to the ellipse and we're just going to do light colors so we'll go let's see light pink sure you know what the other one's going to be light pink this one here dot light pink because so we can see that and then this one's just going to be gray dot light gray sure why not okay so these will tell us where our where our targets are showing up so we can see where they're trying to get to where they're attempting to get to okay so see they're doing that see where our where our dude is so the yellow guy's following us what's the blue guy doing he's he's way over there isn't he okay that's something's really wrong with that Okay, so blue, we definitely need to figure out blue. Red is just the random dude. So let's figure out what's going on with the blue. You see which which number is blue? Blue is number 1. Okay, so number 1 is the one that's trying to get ahead of player. Minus last x. 
Okay, so let's see what happens when this tries to do this. Last pointer equals zero. So let's see what our numbers look like. Are we not saving that? That's why. We're not saving the positions here. We never wrote in the code <laughs> to tell it to do that, did we? I think we made the function but never made it call it. That's what happened. Okay, so player moved. So we need to actually call this. You know, it actually helps if you call the function. So when the player moves, and then we're going to go player moved. There we go. Player moved. And we're going to go player moved. <laughs> player moved. All right. And so, I mean, we could have probably even draw have it draw the last few positions too. So let's see what we've got here. And you know what I need to do is I need to set up, before we do this, I need to set up, um, have that initialized too. Oh, we did, didn't we? No, we didn't. Okay, so for int i equals zero, i is less than last to x dot length, whoops, dot length, x dot length, come on. <laughs> x dot length, there we go. And plus plus. Now the reason I use length instead of just telling it that is because that way if you change, if you decide to change this at some point later, it's just a lot harder to track down all those references. Um, so let's go, we're gonna do last x i equals, where is it, player x, and then last y, i equals player y. There we go, and we can probably put that in here because we want to, whoops, we want to do that, we want to do that we're probably going to be calling this from somewhere else if we're re-initializing the maze. So let's try that. Let's see. So these guys are... Where's the blue going now? There he goes. He's going directly on me, isn't he? So the blue is just following directly where I am. The blue is not trying to get ahead of me. Let's see. Yeah, the blue is doing something messed up. So let's go check out what's going on there. We'll see what's happening. And that is going to be this one. So let's go like that. And let's let this run. There we go. Okay, so we have player X. My position is, is 11. What is our last x? Our last x pointer is 3. So our last one is 11. Huh. Is it saving this a lot more often than I think it is? Let's see what our last y is doing here. No, it's not. Okay. So that's working fine. So our x is going to be 11. Our this is going to be 0, so it's going to try to go to 11 across, and then our y is going to be 29, and then that's going to be that. So this is apparently 0. Okay, so player y minus last y, our pointer is 3, 29. Am I doing this? backwards, I think the pointer is exactly where we are now, not where we were last time. Yeah, that's the problem. So I think we do need to increase this pointer after we, after we, uh, after we go up by one. I mean, after we save this, do we increase the pointer? 
No, I think either way we're still going to have to to move it down by one. So let's let's go like this. Let's go back up here, and we're going to do. Let's go like this. Let's go um, T pointer. We're going to do the same thing here. This last pointer minus one. Should we do four? Let's just do four instead of doing that whole thing. So where the, has the player moved in in four turns, right? So let's take out the times four, and we'll take out one of these parentheses. And so that's going to go, yeah, let's try this. Let's see if this works. See where our blue dot goes. Where is our blue dot going? No, it's still just following us, isn't it? I mean, because it should go all the way down. It's just going to where we are. Huh. Okay, let's try this again. See what it's doing. I, this is definitely a logic error. This is something I did that was stupid. And we're going to go figure this out. So it's this one right here. And we're going to go like this. And we're going to continue. Did I, is it, is it not pausing? It's not even pausing. It's not even pausing for for any of this, is it? Did it not did it not put the marker in there? There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna let that run. It's sure taking a long time, isn't it? There we go. Okay, we're gonna let it run. And we're gonna go whoops. And we're gonna try this again. Nope, it's it's now it's not slow enough. Okay. And let's see if we can get it to work now. Where is the thing? Because we moved a few. Get ahead of player. So we're going to go like this. We're going to pause it when it hits this. So let's let it do this. Okay. So pointer equals negative two. And so that's going to be, oh, that's because I'd never, duh. <laughs> there we go. Let's try this. So target X, player X is 23 and 30. Target X and Y is 19. And because I is one, right? Yeah, 19 and 30. Cool. I think we got it. I think we got it. So let's see. Yeah, see, now it's going to try to go over here. Right there. Yeah, perfect. Okay. And so now if we go down here, it's going to try to head us off. See? It's going to try to get to there. Cool, and the red dude just randomly wandering around. Okay, so the other thing we we're, we're going to try out is we're going to make these, now that we've got some semblance of something here, we're going to try to make these move a little bit faster. So why don't we go, let's try six. Let's try six. We'll try making them five times faster. Let's see what they do. There we go, and I am trapped. Okay, let's do another, uh-oh. Okay, zero and zero. So enemy X, zero is seven. Enemy Y, zero is negative one. How did it end up doing that? Huh. Oh, because Duh, because they're, yeah, because their their targets are now, that would be why. 
see their target is going to be um, at some negative stuff, right? Let's see. No, none of their targets are at negative things, but they're just going to move until they hit. Yeah, because... Okay, I see what happened. They're trying to move, and they're just moving in a straight line, and they're not checking on each move if that's going to be... if that's going to hit the edge. So one of the other things we can do is we can go if block we can make those blocks solid along the edge too but I, that's not what I wanted to do we can go um, actually that is something we can do but we want to go um, if let's see enemy x x i is less than zero or enemy x i is greater than see i want to do a less than or equal to i don't want them to actually go outside that bound so greater than or equal to max size what is it max size yeah there we go so if that's true then we're going to go like this we're gonna go uh, minus equals right we're gonna undo our blast movement and we're also going to set this so that they don't try to go through the edge and then we're going to do the same thing with the y-axis and try to remember to get every single x over to a y so we're going to go there 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 and there so let's see if that works there we go cool much better and looks like they're they're doing a fairly good job of trying to uh, to get at me. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> They're still kind of dumb, aren't they? All right, we may we might have to make a little bit more sophisticated pathfinding uh, for these guys in order to um, basically we'll make some pathfinding that that gets them at least halfway to their target or something. Um, so that's going to be, I think that's going to be our next thing is we'll try to make our, we'll try to make our AI a little bit more sophisticated this time. And yeah, cause they're just wandering around like idiots right now and they can't path through these dead ends and around corners and stuff. So yeah, I think that's what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make this a little bit more sophisticated. Um, because the biggest thing is because of the dead ends, they really get stuck in the dead ends. The one thing about the Pac-Man maze and because this basically this AI is about as sophisticated as the Pac-Man AI uh, for the ghosts was. And the reason they didn't get stuck in dead ends is because there weren't any. <laughs> so, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's going to be it. And well, and the other thing is they couldn't reverse directions and there was nowhere, you know, that forced you to reverse directions either. So anyway, that's going to be it for part five. Um, I think you guys are getting some new stuff here i hope you're getting the idea of what we're going for and everything and the nice thing is i think we're also going to try to make these scalable so that we can you know um on the harder basically on the pois i want the doors you know some of the doors are going to be more difficult than others or that kind of thing you know the one that's right next to the core might be harder or something like that and so you can add in more enemies we're gonna make it so you can scale the enemies uh oh it, it tried it again didn't it okay um, but yeah, we're going to make it, you know, so that you can add more enemies and stuff like that too. And, and so we can make them smarter and more swarmy and stuff on the harder doors. But anyway, that's going to be it. <laughs> I'll have to figure out what that is. That's going to be it for episode or part five or whatever. And we'll see you guys in part six. Later.